Okay, good afternoon. This is uh, Mike up at the uh, Anathoth Community Farm, northern Wisconsin. I haven't made a video in a long time. Uh, just because I had stuff going on. But uh, I discovered something uh, today that I'm excited about. Uh, it, it only took me a year to figure out, and that's because I'm old and I'm slow, but uh, I, I can be taught. So the scene you're seeing here is bale grazing uh, out on a, on a, on a, a kind of a hilltop that is, is kind, of, kind, of, uh, kind of gravelly. It's, it's, uh, it's our least fertile bunch of pasture uh, out here. And so we, we bale grazed it last, last winter and really improved it. Oh my gosh. You know, uh, when we, I, I, I put in a, a, a I have a no-till drill, drilled it in the spring, stuff came up like crazy. So, but we decided to uh, bale graze it again. Uh, there's eight steers out here, and uh, f four of them we just got two weeks ago, and one of the little ones was pushing through the poly wire uh, did it twice and going, you know, wherever he wanted to go among the bales. So I'm trying to figure out, short of of running uh, a, a parallel wire around the whole perimeter coming off of the 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 ground nut on the fencer, thought, what can I do short of that? So w what I came up with is uh, I'll show you down here. Um, we wrapped some poly wire around a, a metal T-post and, and then set up the parallel run uh, with the wires right next to each other, you know, far, close enough that they aren't going to arc, but far enough, far, enough away, or far enough away so they won't arc, close enough so that, that if, they, if they touch one, they're going to touch them both. So there you see uh, poly wire wrapped around a a metal T post and there you got the parallel runs coming right up here and you know close enough that if they're gonna if it if if they touch it's gonna it's gonna shock them so that's what we got coming up here and uh, the good news is it came out here with a tester, and uh, when you t when you touch both wires, uh, it's registering 6,000 volts. So so they aren't going to be accidentally or purposefully purposefully going through here. Here's another tricky thing we did is uh, to keep them away from the from the bales. Uh, you can't you can't put these fiberglass posts in frozen ground, so we stick them into the into the bale when it's on its side. You cannot punch them through the thatch, but you can come in the end. So uh, that lets us get the uh, get the the wire around here, and then we can can move it all winter long. Uh, and we let them into one bale at a time, and. Then on the other side here, we've got the the hot wire is is tied on, touching the the hot wire, and the rest of it's in this bucket, and the ground wire just ends up here. So so there you go, and um, you know if you if you think about it, you know. I, I, most of you, most of y'all, knew this already, and uh, and I, I'm a little bit behind the behind the game, but you know, by doing this, I'm thinking that anywhere where your fencing isn't powered because the ground's going away because of snow and cold, uh, you could just do this anywhere by just if you got a, a big area. And uh, got some T posts, tie it to the T post. You know, put some put some uh, insulators up uh, close to the hot wire, and and there you go. You can do little ch little chunks of this, 
and I've got one other place where they can get to that I'm I'm going to do this. It's a it's a poly wire going across a portion of the pasture that I I don't want them to uh, go through. So I'm just going to do the same thing and use the uh, T posts as grounding rods. And uh, the T post is like talking hot stuff to the grounding rod attached to the fencer. So uh, that's all I got today. Uh, it's, a, it's a fairly tranquil scene out here. Uh, you can see we've all, uh, I don't know, we've moved through, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say what, five, five, five bales, either five or seven bales out here so far. Uh, we should have plenty. And uh, you can see there's a good distribution of manure and there's a lot of it. And uh, one of the other things I like about our our bale grazing situation here is is I've got uh, I use swales so there's swales surrounding the whole perimeter and in the spring when the water starts or when the snow starts melting you literally have uh, have a manure tea running down the hill and when we were checking on that in the thaw last year uh, the manure tea was hitting the hitting the swale and sinking into the ground and not going beyond the swale into a wetland area so uh, we've got some good watershed protection going on at the same time so we're uh, we're, we're growing good beef we are uh, uh, increasing fertility uh, and we're protecting the watershed all at the same time uh, and that's a I believe a, a good responsible way to farm so that's what I got and I'm, I'm interested if anybody else, you know, has any other suggestions or uh, what you have on uh, winter electric fence. We don't worry about them, like, pushing through anywhere else because they have no reason to go anywhere else. So they, uh, they, just, they just stay where the food is and stay where the water is and stay where the, where the bedding kind of is. Uh, but once they once they start getting shocked by this poly wire uh, along the bales here, uh, whoever doesn't respect the fence and thinks, yeah, we can get by with something here, uh, they're they're going to change their tune. Hey, guy. So uh, that's it from uh, northern Wisconsin. And uh, what is it? it's like July or January 12th, something like that. It's actually been a fairly mild winter so far. Uh, a couple of early snows that were bad, but uh, that's what I got. Have a nice day. Uh, be in touch about how you're dealing with uh, winter fencing. Uh, thanks very much.